Let's do it. Here we go. That's our in. The clap. You have the clap? Uh, I try not to. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, the official podcast of the Fireside Tattoo Network. We're here day three, wrapping it up at Tattoo the Lou. We finally pinned down Raptor Laser himself. It's me, here in the flesh. That's right, Matt Driscoll. So, uh, so we're going to talk mostly fishing and a little bit of tattoos. Uh, let's go 50-50, man. Okay. I'm 50-50. into it. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, so has this been worked on again since I've seen you? Uh, uh, I don't no, man. I have. Just, it's been finished since uh, December. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's so good. Living its life now. I'm super pumped, man. It's yeah. uh, It's been a long road. Yeah. It's been a long road. It's so good. There's some photos. We, we have to drop some. Are you cool if we drop some images of it? Absolutely. Over this, uh, Absolutely. And it was done by who? Ron? Uh, Ron, Ron Earhart. Ron yep. Earhart. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? He of? is out of San Jose, uh, analog tattoo. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna assume that most people are familiar with your work. You're, you're pretty popular on the Instagram, so I won't I won't go too far into uh, uh, to what you do right off the bat. Now, you guys did recently when we first met. You were at Off the Map in East Hampton. Yep. You're, you're now at your own spot with Gabe Londis. Yep, just Ninth opened our Realm. own studio, Ninth Realm Gallery, Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a great time, man. I'm, I'm really pumped to finally have my own studio. It's been a long road, dude, trying to, you know, go through the motions of tattooing. And, you know, I feel like everyone eventually opens up their own studio. Yeah. Uh, and um, with some great people there, so how it's many, a good time. How many tattooers are there? Uh, right now, it is me and Gabe primarily. Um, my lady, Jess Brown, she works on the weekends. And then uh, eventually we're going to have Paul Vander Johnson coming over for the, from the U.K. Oh, okay. Um, why why does Jess only do the weekends? Uh, she works part-time at Helheim Gallery with Kelly Doty and uh, uh, okay. Sean Gardner and Britt Whitman. Okay. Yeah. So she's just splitting her time yep. a little bit. Yep, yeah. yep. How is that working with your lady friend? Uh, it's fucking dope, man. Is I mean, uh, we have an awesome relationship. Been together three years, and uh, I personally love working with her every day. We push each other. Our styles are totally different, but also relevant to each other. We have common interests, and uh, it's super fun. Um, yeah. I gotta say, I love being able to travel with her, you know, because she can pay her own way, and we kind of split things down the middle, and we're both super chill. And yeah, yeah. yeah. So speaking of you have different styles, let's, let's jump into that just a little bit because I don't really know what your style is. Uh, I think you do a lot of things really, really well uh, and uh, technically as clean as anyone that I know. But I say, like, I'll see some crazy color stuff. I mean, one thing I'll say is, that, like, I see some really interesting textural effects and really interesting mark-making shapes are, are very unique to, to you. Okay. But from a subject matter uh, standpoint or from, like, whether or not you're more of a black and gray guy or more of a color guy, I don't have a clue. Yeah, uh, so I would say my style is real school. I like new school elements like, uh, you know, distorted features, kind of perspective angles. Yeah. Um, I definitely reference a lot of realism for uh, some of my color theory and uh, textures and just anatomy of uh, objects like, you know, any kind of creature or whatever. I want to make sure it's accurate to science as, mu- as best as I can. Um, but as far as like what I like to do the most, man, I like to keep evolving and I like to do something different every day. I, I would hate to get pigeonholed into one thing. I mean, I did a lot of biomech when I first moved to Massachusetts and I really started getting, getting a heavy uh, inquiries about it because, you know, there's not a lot of people I feel in my area doing quality work of that type. Yeah. But man, I just like got so bored of trying to do similar things every day and uh, kind of getting pigeonholed. Like, I mean, there's only so many colors in the world. You can do so many things with them, but uh, what works on skin is not necessarily what is in life, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you, you said you pull a lot of, of, of life or reference. Um, how, how do you approach your – do you have a consistent way that you approach design? Um, I mean, it, everything I do is freehand, so I'm, I'm drawing everything on with markers. And uh, usually what I'll do is I'll just, like, as terrible as this is, I'll Google image mm-hmm. and just look for, like, the coolest references I can find. And uh, a big part of freehanding that allows so much freedom is I don't actually draw anything until my client gets there. Mm. So I can kind of talk to them and see what they really want and... I always like getting a little bit too much information. Like, I'm like, what What do you like? What, what's your favorite color? You know, like, throw some stuff at me and then let me tune you back just a little bit. And uh, 
find something that's somewhat simple that works for both of us, but also very graphic and, uh, you know, uh, has a lot of rhythm and flow to the design. Yeah. Are you, do you have pretty good um, luck with people? People are comfortable with not seeing, with you not having something prepared in advance? Uh, I think over the years, like, people are kind of in tune with it. And now, anytime someone kind of is like, I really want to see a full rendered drawing before I get started, I'm like, you know, if you see my work online, you like what I do, like, I have a process, this is how I do it. If you're not comfortable with that, I'm probably not your artist. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I don't want people to go in fearing getting tattooed by me. It's just not a good way to start yeah. a client-artist uh, relationship, you know. Yeah. So why, um, why that approach? Do you have, is there, are you making decisions based on, like, that person as they walk in the door, how they feel to you, what their yeah, I mean, shapes I, are that you're dealing with? Yeah, like, so I, I take an area. I find a lot of my stuff doesn't photograph extremely well because of the nature of how I make it wrap the body and fit uniform. But when you see it in person, it has a much uh, stronger grasp on people than a lot of the you know convention-style tattooing I see that's kind of print and stick uh, yeah. nature, you know? Yeah. But uh, a lot of the times, you know, I just kind of talking to them it helps me mold my ideas better and makes us both happy and as they get to sit there and see me draw it they see the time it takes to come up with something and a lot of the times sometimes i'll even erase three or four times before i even let them have an opinion on it mm. uh, because i'm just per per like personally not happy with the design yeah and then once i'm happy i'm still like willing if there's something they don't like i'm like you know i ask them steps of the way like what if, what do, would you think about throwing this in here or like say you know they're really into cats but then they like baseball you know i'll be like okay well we're doing this crazy kooky cat why don't we give it like a baseball bat or a glove or have it you know rolling on its back playing with something you know like yeah. so it helps me form my subject matter you know through talking to them what they're into yeah so you, you have to be really um strongly rooted in your in your kind of drawing foundations and, and understanding shapes and and values and relationships and composition in order to be able to invent the types of things that you're inventing on the fly do you ever find Absolutely. yourself like fuck i should have prepared more for this one I um it, i mean it definitely happens but uh you know i find this is where fishing comes in for me um i find you need to have a balance of work and life yeah. um my life i never want it to be my work um work is a side effect of my life um and not the other way around i don't think it ever should be that way um so sometimes i'm not fully happy i think things could have come better but because of the nature of the fact that it is a tattoo it's going to age and fade and the way I, I almost never do one-shot tattoos, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yeah. two, sh two passes is always good on one thing, whether it's a sleeve or whatever it is. So being able to create layers and the fact that I'm going to see them again and have another chance to work on this project again, it kind of, they come in with a fresh, like, I have a fresh brain when they come in. Yeah. And when I see the piece, I don't remember what my plans were the time before. So I find like maybe I come up with something different or something just needs a little more contrast and you can kind of always add it, you know, I mean, I don't like to uh, do cover ups, but I'm capable of fixing things, yeah. uh, so to speak. So a lot of my own work, if I don't like something, I can actually just change it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, why, why do you avoid cover ups? Uh, it's just very limiting um, a lot of the times. And two, now, like, technology is so far. Like, if you have something that you're so unhappy with, give it a couple shots of laser. It's mm -hmm. going to save you time and money because it'll actually take me three times the amount of time to do your cover-up than it would for me to do a fresh slate. And that is way more money than getting two sessions of laser. Yeah, yeah. So, And, and even the best cover-ups, there's some compromise being absolutely, made. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that being said, though, you know, laser does change the skin to where sometimes I'm like, mm -hmm. shit, I wish they hadn't lasered it so much, you know? Yeah. Like, so you kind of, I tell people, do it twice, come in, let me check it out, um, and then I'll work with it from there. Yeah. Um, but that just, you know, that's where we're at in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's jump into fishing a little bit. I'm not a fisherman. I, I mean, I follow your Instagram. I know you fish, like, 
crazy. You catch crazy looking fish, giant fish. I have a, a houseboat in Arkansas. I okay. spend all my weekends there. I'm getting too old to like ski and jump off cliffs Absolutely. and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's why I got into fishing. To yeah, be honest. So, so that's my that's my, that's where that's exactly where I'm going with this. I want to I want to be a fisherman. I want to, so. The, our lake feeds the Little Red River, which has, like, the world record brown trout, uh, a, hand, a handful of record holders. And so there are tons of fly fishermen there all the time. And I went one time with a friend of mine. He had all the gear and stuff. And I went, and I had so much fun. I didn't catch anything. That's, like, hard to catch fish that way, huh? Um, fly fishing, I've never done it, to be honest. Uh, it's very challenging. Yeah. Um, so it's n- Honestly, it's so much gear you have to buy. Like, I've already invested into my bass setup. Now I'm getting into something called center pin, which is another a whole other setup. It's kind of in between uh, spin fishing and fly fishing. Um, fly fishing is a, a whole other ball game. And then, like, you know, like, how far are you going to go? Then I'm going to get into tying flies, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, because I'm picky, like, you got to kind of match the hatch with that, that sort of thing. But yeah. there's always alternatives to that. Um, and some things are more successful, and I find... I can nail as many fish as a fly fisherman with a bass rod if you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's half the fun of fishing for me is figuring out how to do it. Like, that's kind of where I'm at in tattooing. I mean, I'll always love it, but I find I find more love in painting because it's more free and I can still learn things. Mm-hmm. To where tattooing, I've got my technique down. I've got my color palette. It's just not as versatile as painting. So yeah. with fishing, it's kind of the same way. It's like a new learning experience for me. I've only really been, I've been fishing my whole life, but I've only really gotten heavier into it the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been, it's been really fun to figure out new lures and new ways to go about catching large fish. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do see when we, before we started rolling, we were talking about the relationships between fishing and tattooing, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're, there's, there's gear that you're dealing with, things that's, that solve specific problems, have a specific purpose, don't work well for other Absolutely. elements, just Absolutely. like in tattooing. Um, yeah. Like you said, you have to relax in both, in, in, in both environments in order Absolutely. to be successful. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really, sorry. So, so help, help me out if I want to, so I'm on the, I'm on a dock on the front of a boat. So I want to okay. start just by like, and there are, t- there are catfish, there are brim, there are, I'm sure there are bass. It's a, it's a big lake. Um, but I, uh, if I'm, like, dock fishing, it's, you know, 40 feet deep right outside of my, uh, outside of my boat, what, wh- wh- where do I start? I mean, so what, what do you want to catch? Like, what, first of all, let's start with this. What's your objective? Do you just want to catch fish? Do you want to catch fish you can eat? Nah, I probably won't. I don't think I'll actually. I haven't learned to fillet and like clean fish or anything yet. Do you I'm, do that a lot? Um, so I really am an animal nerd. I don't like killing things. Like yeah. it's not my jam. I do do a couple harvests a year just because I'm a fisherman and I feel it's necessary. Like you know, I pay for my uh, my license every year and it, that's part of it. You know, a lot of the fish that I do eat, I usually eat stocked fish. Oh, okay. So I don't like taking from a natural uh, ecosystem. I'm taking from something that's been put there uh, with the money I've provided for the state. Gotcha. So uh, if you want to just catch stuff that's fun, um, catfish, you're going to want to do it at night. Okay. Um, they just they like stinky bait. I always use mackerel. Um, you just put a little sinker, little hook, uh, throw it out there, let it sink to the bottom, plant your rod on the dock, tie a bell to the tip of it, and get hammered. Really? Yeah. Uh. The drunker you get, the more likely you are to catch a fish. Uh. A lot of people don't know that with catfishing, but that's how it goes. That's Lots of goes. snacks out there, you know. Um, mosquito, yeah. if you're a mosquito magnet, I'm not. They don't like oh, me. Like, I I'm mean. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you are a mosquito magnet, you know, bug repellent is going to be a big thing. Yeah. Uh, some people like that go more natural. Clove oil and stuff like that will help yeah, with yeah. that. I try to go double DEET if I can. Yes. And I need yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, that DEET, man, that's that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so then another thing you can do, what's helped me get better at fishing is uh, you can download apps that will tell you what kind of fish are in that area that will oh. even go any further where people will show you where they've caught fish on the app. Um, personally, I'm a jerk. I like keeping it secret, keep it safe. I don't want people to know my good spots because that yeah. is a thing. There are better spots to catch fish. A lot of that's based on topography of your lake. Right. So where yeah. there is structure, you're going to find bass. Uh, perch things of that nature where the bait fish and bait will hide under things the big fish will come around and search for them Um, so a lot of what you're going to want to do personally bass are fun Uh, a lot of top water if your lake is really clear yeah okay so uh, it's harder to fish clear water you've got to go natural the water is deep you're going to want to use something like a jig with a crawfish trailer drop to the bottom you just like pop it a couple times here and there 
and uh, you'll catch some really big fish that way. Huh. Um, YouTube's going to be your friend with all this stuff. Yeah. Um, find out what's in your lake. Uh, you know, like I said, find the apps. Uh, I use one called Fish Brain. There's a bunch of them, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, YouTube's going to help you with this stuff. It's funny you're talking about, the, like, finding spots and not letting people know where your spots are. I, I remember working, like, years ago, right out of high school, I worked in construction, and I, uh, one of the guys that worked with me on my crew was a competitive fisherman, and he, like, had sunk all this money into this motor on his bass boat. And I was like, what is the point in having a fast bass boat? And he's like, because I want to get to my spot first in, uh, in the comp. Well, I guess, like, they blow the whistle or whatever they do, and, like, you haul ass to where you want to Oh, yeah, be. dude, totally. So you're, like, racing to the spot. Yeah, totally. And people know lakes, you know. Like, there's yeah. there are spots in lakes where you will catch a fish every time you throw a lure there. Really? Like, I know from experience, you know, like, I have spots in western Massachusetts where I can go there every time, and I'm like, yeah, I've hit nine fish here in a row one time. Huh. And you go there and catch one every time. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's weird. Like, they, there are areas in the lake that channel bait and just have structure that the fish like. And if you know how to read the bottom, like a lot of the times what I was saying with that jig, with the craw trailer, I'll throw those and read the depth. Like, I'll count how long it takes to hit the bottom. Mm. And then when I pop it, I, I'll know if it hits a log. I'm like, there's a log there. That's uh. a good spot to fish. But then you don't want to fish a jig because that shit will snap off. Uh, and I'm going to start fishing a deep diver over the top of it. Or there's a bunch of other lures you can use uh, to kind of drop in there. Um, one of your best friends, if you want to catch fish, is going to be the rubber worm. A Sanko. Uh, really? Look up Texas rig. You're going to use a wide gap worm hook and you hook it up weedless. I usually do no weight, but if you're fishing a deeper lake, you want to throw weight on it, drop to the bottom. Huh. And it won't get ca caught on nothing. You can throw it right in the weeds, which really? is where the bass like to sit. Gotcha. Oh, it's funny you mentioned. Uh, I, I don't want to make this a full fishing podcast, but you mentioned that um, uh, that they that catfish love stinky bait. I remember as a kid, my stepdad taking me out fishing. We had this kind of like it looked like peanut butter, but it was the most disgusting, stinky. And you like dipped a little sponge in it. Smell like dog poop. Oh god, it was so gross. So what? what do you have any idea what I'm talking about? It's like uh, a, it, they called it stink bait. Yeah, uh, stink bait. It's Probably part chicken, um, oh, okay. maybe a little bit of, like, a lot of them are, like, blood baits. They're made oh, from, like, yeah. chicken blood, but they're flavored with all kinds of shit. Oh. A lot of people make their own stuff. They'll put chicken in a jar with, like, whatever else and screw the top and leave it in the sun for a month. Oh, God. Yeah, catfish are weird animals, but, oh. man, they can smell from forever away. I've kept fish in tanks, yeah. and I've watched, like, behavioral things, and just a lot of them are kind of similar. You get, you know, topwater fish, midwater fish, and then floor fish, and... Catfish oh. or bottom feeders, man. They'll they'll eat all kinds of weird stuff off the bottom. Oh, that's crazy. Well, so I, I, I obviously I see that you you fish a lot and you um, you're always you know, like posting photos of fish. And they're beautiful. Some of them look crazy, but I don't see you tattoo that many fish. Um, I I do every now and then, but like I said, man, I I like to do a little bit of everything. Um, and what ends up happening, I got into dinosaurs a few years back. Like, oh. I really made a push to, like, hey, I want to tattoo dinosaurs. Yeah. Well, there's a dinosaur everyone wants to get, yeah. and it's T-Rex. Yeah, I yeah. swear everyone wants a T-Rex. You can see that. And it's like anything else. How many, like, you know, in my brain, I see the most dynamic T-Rex the first time. And then after that, I'm, I'm like, how can I change the best one that I did? Yeah. You know what I mean? And still yeah. maintain that level. Then after you do, like, the fifth or sixth one, you're like, I got to go a whole different direction. And that's cool for a while, but it gets really hard to maintain your style and quality while doing the same thing over and over. And yeah. with fishermen, I guarantee you, I've, I just did a largemouth bass like a year and a half ago. I started another one, didn't get to finish it yet. Maybe I'll see him again. He seemed like he was having hardships, so it'll be a while. Yeah. Um, but... People are always going to want largemouth bass. Like, yeah. how many times can I tattoo a largemouth bass and change it, dude? And right. with a dinosaur, they got four legs. You can kind of move those. With a fish, <laughs> You're stuck with there's one way it jumps, and yeah. there's one way it swims. I mean, it's there's not a lot of dynamic elements to that. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of okay with just doing one every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Um, what um, – uh, I want to I change uh, uh, change direction a little bit. So you've you've just started running a shop. Your uh, Gabe told me uh, I was like I don't guess it's that new anymore. I asked how the new shop was. Like, I don't guess it's that new. And he's like, well, we just made our third mortgage payment, so it's that old. I'm like, oh, that's just old enough to be like, fuck, we got to keep paying this mortgage. Everybody. Yeah, man. The newness wore off, and now you have to keep paying it. And it's you know so, every week it seems like there's something else. Like we need a couple new 
a couple more pieces of furniture to make the place a little more complete. And uh, we just paid our final contractor bill, which was like, oh, fuck, I forgot we had this. And he hit us up. And we were like, oh, man, here it is. Yeah. And it was it was a big bill. And then, uh, you know, it's just one thing after another. Now we're doing signage and dealing with that. So so is that been, is it still exciting? And do you think, so, like, visualize this time next year, you know, when all the, when it's just running, it's just maintaining a shop. Uh, right. You, and the newness of, like, building the thing out is, is gone. Is it, do you think that's a good decision, something you're excited about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so my thing is it's always going to be exciting to me because it is mine. So there's, there's going to be something I can do all the time. You know what I mean? I think the the idea of someone finishing their shop is like, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of like giving up on art. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's always going to be an expression of myself and uh, be something that I want to be an extension of the art that I do. Yeah. So I can always, you know, and I'm all, I, I like selling my art as soon as I make it. So a lot of the times my paintings, like as soon as I get an offer, I'm like, yeah, man, whatever, you yeah. know, like take yeah. it, it's yours. Uh, so... You know, there will always be a need for me to keep doing art, finding places to put more art and kind of, you know, add add style to it, you know, like taxidermied fish. You know, I'm getting yeah. one of those uh, later the year. So yeah, yeah. put that up on the wall, man. I'm pumped. Yeah. Are, are you guys do? Is there front desk? Do you have a help? Or are you guys just handling your own books, handling your uh, own I, stuff? I'm pretty solo myself. I'm pretty yeah. picky on how I do things. Um, we do have a shop manager, Leanne. She is fucking amazing it's gabe's wife and okay. she is incredible she will do anything and everything for us all the time she's coming in we got like a full snack bar for our clients and she's oh, constantly nice. coming in like do you want anything seltzer soda juice like granola bars whatever and she's willing to do our books too uh, i think she i'm sure she does gabe's but me i'm just kind of like more like oh, i've handled my own stuff like yeah. i'm pretty picky with how things are done so did you do that because i know off the map was incredibly structured and that with their like it was run like a corporation uh did, did you handle your books there or um did you i pretty much i pretty much did it's just like i would go through the front desk for like they would be like hey do you want a consultation i would and it's basically like they would read the email to me which uh, now i just do that part myself <laughs> right. and then i would be like yeah sounds good which in my head i'm like yeah sounds good yeah and then they come in it's almost the same except them i'd be like yeah bring in the consultation yeah book it for this day so it really wasn't a lot of effort on their right. part so it wasn't that much for me to take over that responsibility either. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I want to. I, I, I hope. I hope this doesn't come out the wrong way. I was like I said earlier. I think that you've got the like. Uh, uh, technically, you're very solid. You seem really proficient. You're drawing and finishing big tattoos. When I watch you tattoo, though, you seem really. Oh, jerky. I've got tremors, dude. What 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 is that about? Like when uh, I first saw you tattoo, I was like, "Am I making him nervous?" No, like, so shoulder? this is really funny, dude. Uh, so I start out in a shop in Southern California that was super hood, uh, and I, the first time I ever, I never cared about tattoos growing up. Like okay. never even crossed my mind. I just liked to draw. I drew a lot. So my friends kind of pushed me into it because I was 19. I had to get a job doing something besides. I was doing construction at the time. And when it's 110, 115 out, that's a shitty job. Like, yeah. you can't work after 2 o'clock. Right. Um, and I was smashing my hands, nailing my hands to cabinet doors. Like, you know, bad shit happens in construction. Mm -hmm. So uh, I need to do something else. Get into tattooing. Uh, and I kind of, you know, I got pretty lucky with an apprenticeship. A lot of the shops turned me down. I just kind of shopped shops for a day to see if it was something I'd be into. And everyone was really, like, kind of a dick to me this was a different time you know yeah. this was like 13 years ago right. uh shops were still kind of like in that firebomb your neighbor kind of stage right. especially down there yeah. a lot of biker run, run places and the last place i show up they turned me down initially and then he saw my book and was like actually you know what come back first next month huh. so i did and i was there every day i was working a sporting good job too so uh I would show up in the morning in my construction gear, be like kind of sweaty and dingy. And then I'd show up in the afternoon after my sporting good job and be in a button up shirt and a tie. And they're like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> right. But anyways, moving on, they, yeah. uh, my first tattoo, they were like, you're going to tattoo yourself. And I'm like, I had never had a tattoo and never oh. held a tattoo machine. Uh. So my first run, I'm like, all right. And I start tattooing my leg and I already have tremors. Like it's a genetic thing that runs uh. in my family. My sister has my aunt, everything. Huh. Uh, it seems to get a little worse as you get older. Like seeing my aunt, her whole head kind of shakes at times. Hmm. 
uh, when she's trying to do things. And it's something I just kind of learned to work with. Uh, yeah. I've had other artists hit me up about it and have similar issues. Um, but it doesn't really affect my work. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why. I've just kind of learned to work around it. Yeah. But So as I started tattooing myself the first time, I was shaking so bad, I actually had to hold the machine with two hands. Oh, wow. And they called me shaky until <laughs> I left that shop. So for really? six years of my career, literally everyone in my entire town, it still haunts me. I go back uh, there and people call me call shaky, shaky. Like, it's my handle. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty uh, funny. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not not particularly that I'm nervous. Some days are worse than others. It's just uh, the nature of the beast, man. It's something i got to live with and yeah. uh, work with. How do you think you adapt? I mean, to me, j just uh, trying to visualize, I've, I've only seen you tattoo a handful of times, but I feel like you kind of work a lot. You, pull from your entire body or from your shoulder do you do yeah, maybe a little bit i mean i i guess i haven't really noticed a lot of what i relate like how i deal with it too is i used to be really big into target shooting in southern california i, I mean it's the desert so i had a little spot i would go before work on the weekends it was a way to just kind of you know blow off steam because fishing down there sucked uh, okay. i didn't really get into it till i moved to massachusetts heavily um so out there, it was shooting. I used to reload my own ammo, and it was just really yeah. fun for me to shoot long range, tar long range targets. Yeah. And the trick to shooting a high powered rifle and at long range is every little thing you do matters. Every little move you make, the way you pull the trigger, it all is going to change the trajectory of that round over a 300 yard span quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so when you go to shoot, you take a deep breath in, you breathe out, you pull the trigger between your natural paws. Hmm. So when I'm tattooing, I kind of do the same thing. Hmm. I just breathe, and then when I breathe out, I pull my line. Huh. And then okay. when I breathe in, I pull my line. And once I breathe out, it's just huh. it's kind of like that's your most relaxed state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good way to look at. It. That's funny how you pull you pull things from like every aspect of your life. Huh? It's all related. That's why yeah. I'm like everything is related. You know, you got like I really like trying to do everything and then kind of picking the parts of other things and putting them all together into one bag yeah yeah that's a great way to look at it and it, and it gives everything a, a real purpose yeah, like outside absolutely. of itself you know yeah. it's tied to a bigger puzzle that's yeah, a, man. i love that i love that way of looking at it i do uh i do cut out a lot of things that i find don't have purpose in other things mm. um or at least don't have enough like i used to be really big into video games Okay. And I fucking love them. I think they're beautiful. Like, they're so fun to play. Um, but in my life, the time that I would put into them, uh, it just doesn't have any relationship with anything else I do. Yeah. So, yeah. unfortunately, I had to tune them out even though I absolutely love them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a disciplined, uh, yeah, that, that's great discipline because I, I think that is the downfall of so many tattooers. Like, I know so many tattooers that are, they will always complain about their lack of clientele or their, you know, how the, the, the well, limitations in their town or their industry, but they, they spend three times the amount of effort on the newest video game. They take off three days of work when the game is released uh, and they master this game. And then the tattooing is like, eh, you know, that's what I do for money. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Uh, like, some people are happy with that shit, you know? Like, uh, it's kind of, it's up to you how you want to run the game, you know? Like, you know, game of life, per yeah. se, you know? Uh, yeah. Whatever makes you happy. That's yeah. what, it, as long as it's not hurting nobody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people get into things that are way worse than video games. So, yeah. you know, that's honestly, in my opinion, not that's so bad. True. That's true. Um, all right. Well, one thing I want to hit before we wrap up, that we, it's become like a, a theme in this uh, this last uh, couple of series that we've done, and that you travel a lot, um, yep. and and most of the people that we're sitting here talking to do. That's how why we're catching them at shows. Absolutely, I see you all the time, bud. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so, uh, so how are you managing your books to allow for your travel? Um, I only book out three months. Okay. Um, I'm very selective with the pieces I take on, which allows me to like you know, ixnay cover-ups and things of that nature, just things yeah. I don't have a, a big interest in. Yeah. And three months, I think, is plenty of time to kind of get myself together, figure things out. If I have to reschedule on someone, like, you know, a month in advance, I only have to push them back, like, two more months. Yeah. It's way better than six months to a year because I I booked out to a year. I booked out to a year and some change, like a yeah. year and three months. Yeah. And, man, if I get sick and someone's waited a year and three months to get tattooed uh, yeah. and my next opening is a year and three months, I'm like, what do I do, man? Right. You know, so then I end up working on days off, which I kind of already do that sometimes because I travel so much. So yeah. it's it's honestly super tough finding the balance between all of those things mm -hmm. but it's just another part of the puzzle man yeah you, you work yeah. with what you got 
So what you you're booking three months and then you'll close off. What are you are you keeping a waiting list for people that are interested after that, or you just say, hey, hit me up. I'm, I'm yeah. Call I'm, me next month. I'm like I. This is one of the best things I ever heard my mom tell me. Uh, growing up, was squeaky wheel gets the oil. Yeah. Just I'm like keep yeah. p- keep bugging me. Yeah. See what's up. And honestly, that is what gets people into my books because they keep bugging me. Even if I'm like, nah, I'm not into your idea. They'll yeah. be like, what about this? What about this? <laughs> right. Like actually, the guy I tattooed yesterday. He hit me up last year, kind of last minute, and was super bummed, and he found me on the internet and was like, I, I didn't know, like, how much he was into my stuff, but yesterday he's like, man, you have no idea how excited I am, and I was like, it made me feel so good. I was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. this is dope, dude, and he, like, literally kept bugging me, and, like, uh, probably, like, November or December of last year, he hit me up and was like, hey, are you ever going to be out in Missouri again? I'm like, actually, I'm doing Tattoo to Lou. He was like, I want, I want a day, and I was yeah. like, well... You want a long day? He was like, yeah. So I gave him Saturday, and he was, yeah. like, super pumped to be here, and he was a super rad guy. So it was, awesome. it was nice, you know, to, to mean, you know. And it, I think doing that weeds out the people who aren't that serious mm-hmm. to where anyone who's willing to keep bugging me and get in, they're really pumped to get work from me because, you know, it meant enough to get tattooed by me that they kept bugging me. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I think that's probably a good way to look at it. I, we've uh, I've heard a, a tons of different approaches, but probably the most common is that you know booking uh, whatever that period of time is, and then and then closing off. And the big difference seems to be whether or not someone's holding a waiting list after that. Jesse Smith, who was just on the last episode that came out Wednesday, has a really unique approach, and then he treats his bookings like a timeshare, where like if you have the first Monday of the month, you own that Monday for the rest of your life if you want it, uh, like until right. you back off. You know, of course that in the the and then so he can like plan you know his trips or whatever and it's not that big of a deal because they already have every first monday so like oh that monday i'm actually you know i'm actually in st louis so that won't work that's cool i have the first monday of next month too right and so it makes it a little bit easier for him i thought that was a unique approach too i mean i feel like my stuff it definitely works out similar but organically like a lot of my clients they do have the common day off so it it, it literally is every month to every other month i see that person on the same day without actually you know treating it like timeshare i just for me, I, it's, I try not to have too many things I have to manage. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if I get too systematic, it's like, it's a little too much for me. I, I yeah. kind of, there's there's peace in my chaos yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I love it. I love your philosophy on, like, how fishing and tattooing and whatever else, yeah, uh, long-range shooting fit together. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, and we've made it through this entire episode. We haven't talked about your long balls or anything really uh, off I mean, beat. Yeah, I could go on that <laughs> stuff all day, man. <laughs> I get re- yeah. weird real quick. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. half of having fun, man. Yeah. you got to enjoy yourself. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, thanks so much for taking the time. Dude, if, um, it's been great, Jake. Yeah, yeah. If um, if you guys want to keep up, well, you probably already know, at Raptor Laser. There's not an, is there an underscore? Nope. No, just, just Raptor, Raptor, Raptor Laser. Laptor Laser with a Z. Oh, yeah, yeah. After Laser with a Z uh, on Instagram. And obviously, if you want to get tattooed, you just have to keep, keep bugging me. Just stay persistent. And the good thing is you're all over the all over the country. Do you, are you, do, you do international shows? Yes. Uh, I will be in Evian, France this year. Oh, I want to do that one so bad. Dude, man. it's, it's yeah. gorgeous, man. I went and I fished the Swiss Alps last year and caught some oh, lake trout. No kidding. Yeah. I don't know that. Um, what's his name? Um, Dats. Bo- Dats, yeah, yeah, I've never met him. He's a cool uh, dude, man. He? He's super fun. Yeah, He's super fun. I need, I need, uh, yeah, I need to reach out. I want to do that show. He also does Tahoe, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I haven't done either of those, but I need to. So maybe good shows. You know, that's another thing is I like doing shows that is like almost a travel destination for me. Yeah. You'll never catch me at a big city show. I'm not a city folk. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis obviously is, but there's a lot of cool shit in St. Louis. Yeah. So uh, it's Have brought me back. Have you been to the city museum? Yes. Holy That's shit, what man. made me come back to the show. I'm like, dude, that place is sick. <laughs> it is awesome, so, man. Yeah. Duh, dude, I mean, don't make the mistake of going there with a kid. Like I took my eight-year-old oh, there. Oh, you'll never and find them again. You'll never find them. Oh, it's I w- like, dude, if my parents took me there, I would leave them. I'll be like, no, I'm hiding here until they're gone so right. I could live here in the walls like <laughs> fucking rodent. <laughs> that, would be, that would be my at my MO, absolutely. Yeah. I think about being that age and I'm like, will they notice me? Will they turn all the lights out? Can yeah, I yeah. hide from everyone until yeah. this place closes? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. If you guys haven't been to the city museum, do it. Do it now. All right, that's it. Thank you to Tattoo the Lou for hosting us. This has been an awesome event. They're wrapping it up. I don't know if we'll get any more episodes in. Maybe one or two. I know they said they're, they have a hard stop tonight. Oh, yeah. Boot us oh, out. Yeah. So thank you, my friend. No Always problem, man. It was you. great. Thank you guys for supporting what we do. We'll see you have next time. One.